Tonight, our guest is Marlon Chaplin. This Toronto-born musician, songwriter, producer has just released his EP, Wanderer by Trade, recorded live off the floor, that's a rarity, with some of Toronto's most adept musicians, including members of Zeus, Lemon Bucket Orchestra, and the Sky Diggers. Wow. Marlon formerly shared co-writing duties in the pop rock outfit Broken Bricks before moving on to a solo career, as well as joining Freeman Dre and The Kitchen Party and uh, Ada Dolly and the Paul Bearers, Paul Bearers, uh, who we also produced for. So welcome to Song Talk Radio, Marlon. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, thanks Excellent. Man. That's quite the resume. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I got a quick question for you, Marlon, and, and maybe you guys, if, if you're uh, able to answer this question too. You, you said you went from co-writing to solo writing. Well, it wasn't so much like um, uh, Luke Kaplowski is the other songwriter. It wasn't like we'd sit down in a room, actually, and write together. It was more like we'd both show up with a skeleton right. of our respective songs. Okay. And then we'd flesh out basically what was already written. Okay. Uh, with, with the full band. Right. So I'd come in with, you know, verse, chorus, bridge kind of deal, and then he might add in a little flourish here and there that wasn't there before, okay. or I might, take, I might have taken his song and said, well, why don't we shorten that chorus or, like, add this or that. So right. well, I actually co-write more with Ada. Oh really? Than okay. anything else, that's that's more of a co-writing situation. Okay. Yeah. So when 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 you were writing um, in in that style with broken bricks, with, with broken bricks. Specified. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, was there always a veto power for the person who who brought in the original song and say, "Yeah, I'm going to take your suggestion or not"? Uh, you, to the best of my memory, that's how. Yeah, it was. yeah, yeah. So, okay. That, that's kind <laughs> yeah. of. I think that's pretty much the the Paul McCartney, John Lennon. Yeah. Doing things. Well, at least yeah. when the Beatles got on. Yeah. yeah. Later <laughs> on. You know, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. I think they wrote everything pretty much together in the early days yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then but, later you know, on they they came in with their individual things yeah i mean flush them out together i think let it be wasn't exactly a, uh, well yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah basically they're <laughs> all working record, their own stuff and, yeah yeah yeah. Okay. yeah well i mean that, that's you, you kind of have to sort of come to an agreement i think in any kind of a band that of what the songwriting process is going to be so that yeah. people don't get ticked off halfway through and well yeah, you know, set some ground rules right yeah it's a golden rule just for life for any kind of well, it's true, yeah. yeah. Set yeah, out project, yeah, exactly, yeah. Set out your intentions early on, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it worked for a long time in Broken Bricks. It was good. We had a good relationship, but it, we just drifted apart. You know, yeah. the, well, the, the old yeah. cliche explanation of uh, musical artistic differences. Yeah. So when you're collaborating with Ada now, how was it different then? Uh, it's vastly different because she she'll come in with a very a uh, bare bones idea of a song sometimes sometimes she'll just sing to me mm. there's no chord progression there's oh, no okay. set chorus there's no set verse oh, wow. she'll just yeah she'll just have lyrics on on a, on a piece of paper or memorized and then I'll sit there in front of her with this guitar and work it out from scratch hmm. and it's it's a great relationship hmm. yeah that works well it, it's interesting because I think when you do um, co-write with different people mm -hmm. um, it's not unlike dating actually because you'll meet people you'll have this amazing chemistry with and it just kind of the songs will just sort of fall out and there's other ones where there's you know it might be okay but there's just no special spark there right. it's, it's this weird chemistry thing and let's face it things that are fabricated usually don't ring true yeah that is true yeah, yeah. things that ha are like happy accidents yeah, they are usually they have the have the best outcome. Yeah, of yeah it's true. But you, 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 it's, it's, you can't make them happen. Well, it's like that song that you sit down and and you don't even intend to write it. Yeah, per yeah. Se. it just kind of flows, sort of out, flows of out of you. Yeah. yeah, those wind up being the best ones. Of course, I've always mentioned that you know when you're looking for a, for band members, that very often you know they're going to be a band member the minute they walk through the door. Oh, even absolutely. before you hear them, and I don't know what it is. Mm. Um, it, it, it's just like this. I don't know if you've known them in a previous life or something, or <laughs> you know, um, just like the cut of their jib. Yeah. Have you found the same thing, Dave? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's, um, you know, the personal chemistry informs sort of the professional chemistry. And if it's someone yeah, mm -hmm. that you can, because when you think about the, the dynamic of songwriting, it's, it's great when everything is, is moving in the same direction and kind of you're firing all cylinders. Um, and then w w the, the problem might be, um, you know, when some, some stress comes up just because, you know, maybe someone has, came in with the skeleton of the, of the idea and somebody else has a strong idea and they're not, they're not meshing and you kind of need that, that chemistry to, like, it's easy to, easy to work together when, when things are easy. Yeah, And it's, it's if you've got that rapport that gets you through when things are a little challenging, yeah. that's kind of what separates between, oh, this is really good and I want to go back to this, to, oh, yeah, maybe we're just, you know, I'll just, good luck in your next band. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. it's, it's also important when you're working in a band or collaboration uh, to to work together with people who have different strengths than you, right? It sounds like like, you, like you and Ada come from com- almost completely different directions. Yes, yes. Right? no, that's so, very true. That's very true. I come from more of a school background, and she's just completely raw, which is her one of her strengths, I think. So, what, mm-hmm. like you said, school, um, what uh, Royal Conservatory, or no? You know, when that came out of my mouth, I was thinking about a bunch of friends that I have that are way more schooled than I am. <laughs> no, I just mean that I took drum lessons. Oh, wow. Uh, from an early age. Oh. Cool. Uh, and I went to a, an art school oh, right. for high school, so I, I, I had to take music theory. Oh, okay. So, you know, I, I know just enough. <laughs> so, but, so were you a drummer first? I was, yeah. That was, that's really interesting, because when I was listening to the tracks that you submitted mm-hmm. for the show, I was listening to the songs going, I bet you anything this guy's a drummer. Really? Yeah. Really? Why? Um, yeah, I'm curious. just because they're very, they're, 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 even the melodies are very rhythmically tight. Ah, everything's everything's yeah, intensely yeah. rhythmically tight. Ah, I, I can hear right? that. And yeah. rhythmically designed. Yes, and that is something that is just ingrained in me. Yeah. You know, starting from a rhythmic background, mm-hmm. it's just, it's hard to escape. So are you co-writing a lot now, or is it mostly just kind of yourself doing your own thing, or? Well, I collaborate with a whole bunch of people. Um, as far as my, my solo stuff goes, it's just me. But I also work with um, a good friend of mine. Her name's Cynthia Baba. She has her own band called The Naive. Mm. And um, uh, she's the closest thing, I'd say, to a musical partner that I have. So she plays in my band when there's more of a fleshed-out lineup. And her and I, again, have a very symbiotic relationship, not that different from what Ada and I have. She's oh, a nice. good, Yeah, she's a, a good complementary um, force. How old were you when you started writing? Pardon? How old were you when you started writing? Well, when I started writing, when I tried my hand at writing, I must have been about uh, 14. Okay. 14, 15, around there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was really just a drummer before that. I started, yeah, yeah, I yeah. started drums when I was nine. Okay. And then realized you can't write a song on a drum kit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I still, I still say that the drums are the most important part of any band. Yeah. Because yeah. if you have yeah. a great drummer, you can put any kind of crap on top of it. It'll sound fantastic. Yeah. But if you've got a bad drummer, it's you will drum always drag. sound draggy and yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I agree. You know. I'd rather have a bad band with a great drummer than a great band with a bad drummer. A drummer yeah, yeah. Exactly. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I, I don't think people realize that it's th- why the band is flat or dead. Mm-hmm. They, they'll just think, oh, they're just kind of they're unexciting. Just but yeah. it's, you know. <laughs> well, the drummer is like the goalie. In a way, it is. You, you know, know? They, they tend to get forgotten, yet they're also the flashiest. Well, and it's <laughs> well, and it's also it's it's such a subtle. Um, skill because the difference between having a snare that pushes the song versus drags the song yeah. is like about 12 milliseconds oh yeah literally 12 milliseconds absolutely mm-hmm. I mean and, yeah I mean it's like and how how people can consciously yeah. you know be on top of that well, I, I clued into that a long time ago two of my favorite drummers Ringo yes. oh yeah and Charlie Watts Charlie Watts plays ahead of the beat yeah. Ringo plays behind the beat yeah. Yeah. yeah and you can hear it you know well, it's great if you can actually hear on uh, YouTube. They have a bunch of these um, solo, like you know, Beatles, you mm-hmm. know, solo drums or solo. Oh bass yeah, and stuff. isolated tracks. And the great thing about it, when you hear Ringo's um, tracks is they sound modern. Yeah, oh like, my he god, was, he was the first he was the modern hip hop drummer. drummer. He was yeah. the first hip hop drummer. <laughs> if you listen <laughs> to like, Sgt. Pepper's yeah, reprise, yeah, yeah, yeah. That boom, ch- ch- boom, boom, ch- ch- boom, yeah. Ch- and even the way it was produced, it was so chunky for the time. Yeah, oh, yeah. Totally that yeah. was insane. Yeah, no, he's, he's great. I mean, it's because he was the one, who, I think, he, who really um, started playing uh, behind the beat. And yeah. apparently he was actually really well known as a drummer. He was. In Liverpool. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, they, did, they, did, they didn't fire Pete Best because he was better looking. <laughs> it was just that they saw uh, Ringo Starr and they went, holy crap, this guy's amazing. Yeah. And he was because um, I actually have a, a CD of... Um, the Beatles with Pete Best and wow. the backing oh, original the guy. Really? I'd like to hear that. <laughs> Damn. They yeah, are remar- they are remarkably unremarkable. Really? really, and that's down to the drummer, isn't it? And it, and well, it, it was it, also it, before the a, Beatles really got super tight. You know, no, no, no. This was after years. this was after um, this was just while they were in uh, Hamburg. Oh, really? So that must have been okay. right before they. Uh, yeah, they right made, before they hit. They nixed yeah, uh, Pete yeah. Best. Yeah, and um, oh. it was it was it was Ringo that kind of gave him that that again that <laughs> magic chemistry you know well the, the the best bands to me have that weird planets aligning quality oh, yeah. where how did these four or five guys all wind up in yeah. the same room together you know yeah. the who how could you imagine any drummer except keith moon playing in the who oh yeah yeah or exactly. any other bass player but Entwistle? oh yeah it's just insane it's well and it's terrible when people don't get along you know and yet they still make fantastic music that must be yeah yeah you know? like the kinks yeah 
Or the yeah. police, you know, who apparently yeah, never liked each other. No, yeah. they hated each other. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. notorious for uh, infighting, aren't they? Yeah. 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 But I mean, they never liked each other. Yeah. Really? But they, from, would, from would the, they, they, the lasted, yeah. they lasted for like seven years and then it was like this little explosion, six albums and you're out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like it was super right. fast. But imagine being stuck with those people that you really, I mean, and apparently <laughs> Storm uh, the drummer and, and, and Sting Dear hated Copeland. each other. Yeah. Copeland, yeah. Hated each other so much they couldn't yeah, be I've in the that. same room. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. imagine, I mean, you have to be with these guys all the time. Well, the road is business. the test. Yeah. yeah. You know? But yeah. I, I wonder if, I mean, in terms of the, the dynamics of relationships, maybe, I'm, I'm just speculating here, but maybe there's something, if there's a an animosity on, on some level, um, maybe you're trying to outdo one another. And that inspires. Yeah, the, 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 there's, there's always that tension, right, yeah, between yeah. disagreement. And if you're agreeing on everything, then you may as well just be one person. For sure, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Or, yeah. I mean, yeah, a, a healthy competition or a little conflict can yeah. breed certain things that might not have existed before. That's true. It's just like, yeah. you don't want it to boil over, do you? No, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, that's why things like, the, like I was asking about the veto power yeah. for, for one person on any given song, given that the other person is going to get their turn, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's a good balance, right? It is, yeah. yeah. It, it can All be right. healthy. Shall right. we hear a song? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> what song okay. are we going to hear first? I believe uh, you wanted to play the Skeleton Key We'll do Skeleton Key first? first. Okay. Yeah. So this right. is a recorded track. This is off uh, one of your albums, I'm yeah, assuming? This is off Wonder by Trade. Right, and one thing to to hear about. Um, I, I love the way the your verses land, and you do something in this song, which is really cool and really hooky, and uh, I want people to listen to it because there's there's something that you get that you're that he does, and you're gonna go, oh, I wish he did that. Does that twice? Is it that high bit that descends? No, don't ruin it. <laughs> 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 Anyways, it's uh, and how you, but it was the, it was the perfect call. But listen for it because it's so cool. You should just have a poker face. Oh, jeez, okay. It's radio. (laughs) (laughs) When I get too close to see, I know you'll pull me back. Take care of me. Such a simple gesture, I know. But I must be true when I lay down my plea. And I know what you're saying. I'm trying to hold me down in any intentional way. Keep from the blame. But when I fall back into you On your breast I swear I'm a prisoner there I'm trying hard to unload this weight That I put on myself I know I don't want your help Who's to say if I let you in Now would you be my friend Condemn my sins You lay it down in the movement crown And then you set it aside with no place to hide I can't false to caress my neck And now I'm willing to bet we'll start all over again Strain into the straight up Maybe I care too much Wasting my time Waiting in line for a glimpse
Great stuff. Woo. That was Skeleton Key by Marlon Chaplin, and this is uh, Song Talk Radio on CJRU 1280 AM. So, David, that was so good. <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 I like so much about that, uh, uh, that song. Um, one of the first things um, that, that jumped out at, at me was how in terms of like your chord progression and selection, you've got... Um, sort of like a, um, a classic traditional type of foundation, but there keep being these little unexpected chord mm-hmm. changes that you mm-hmm. throw in. So it's a nice mix of, of classic but unexpected. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. something I've been told about my songwriting a lot throughout the years, that uh, there's always a little something. It's like deceptively um, complicated. It sounds simple, but it is... Yeah, it's like, yeah and it, it just mm-hmm. I, I found that when I was listening to it, it, it just sort of caught the ear in, a, in an interesting right. way. It just kind of makes you pay attention because... Well, yeah, that, that's what I like in art in general. If I'm looking at a painting, mm. I want to see the one little thing that's messing it up, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I always think of it like... Um, you handle your melodies. Um, one of my favorite musical pieces of all time is called The Graceful Ghost Rag. And it has the same kind of melodies, which is kind of, it sort of twists and turns. It's almost like watching a, a hockey player, you know, how they'll be going down the ice and then they'll sort of do those fast deking left like and right. like the Bobby Orr of uh, Yeah, of and that's what, your, that's what your melodies do. It's like you, they never go where you think they're going to go, but they never sound unnatural, mm. no, which no. is a really hard thing to do. And it's something right. I've, I've, I've been always trying to do with my music. I don't think I've succeeded all that well. Okay. But, um, but that high bit... Yeah, that, <laughs> and a little false. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Sorry, which, I ruined which the is post. so hook, hooky. Yeah. And as first time I heard, it, I thought, oh, I wish he did it the second time because it seems natural that you do. Yeah. When you say that, he does it once in every verse. That's right. But you do it once in every verse, and that's the right call. But I see when I first do it, I thought, oh, you you would do that the second time because it's so hooky. Well, it's kind of a lead them wanting more thing. Yeah, it is, and that works so perfectly. It's like you like it. That was the perfect call. Thank you. And I'm sure there must have been people who are saying, oh no, you got to do that part twice. Because um, well, it seems natural that you would, but it's it's. It was kind of, it, it was a realization. It was a, an, an actual tangible realization that I had years ago to not overuse something that's um, like a, you know a little piece of candy. You you don't want to gorge on the Halloween bag, otherwise you're gonna have a stomach ache. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. kind of the same thing with with those little those little nuggets, those little gems. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It, it just want to so drop them in, you know. And people will be like, oh, what was that thing? I want to go back to it. For sure. Yeah. 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 It just it just seems very very well balanced. Like mm-hmm. you're throwing in these these little extra I don't know spices or whatever you right. want to call them, right. but but that it's it's not too much, and then you mm-hmm. d- duck back mm-hmm. out, and it's really cool. That was the, 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 the other thing about your melodies, is like like Phil was saying, that they do all the twists and turns, and um, and a, a lot of the time when. When something's that melodically interesting, it's not necessarily lyrically that interesting. Mm. But you've you mm. seem to have struck a, a great balance between the two because, I mean, there there are some great turns of phrase and great. Uh, like, oh, yeah. like I was saying, like b- before when I, when I suspected that you were a drummer, is just that everything is so tight, like even even melodically and yeah. wordsmithery wise, and in terms of like there's no there's no instances where the syllables are fall- falling in funny places right. or anything like that. Like it's all right. very clean and designed. And yeah, there's it a is lot designed. of words. Designed. And there's a lot of words. There is. Yeah, and there's a yeah, lot of words. Yeah. It's quite a wordy song. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny. Um, you, you keep going back to that uh, the rhythmic thing about being a drummer. Well, hip hop. You know, let's face it. Hip hop is very rhythmically oriented, oh, yes. and there's, this has elements of rap to it. You know, the da da da. The, the amount of of words that I'm packing in. Yeah, that's true. It's just kind of, or like I'd say more like Dylan's um, subterranean homesick blues kind of thing, or mm-hmm. Jack White even does that sometimes. There's a cut off of his record blunderbuss um i can't think of the title of it right now it's near the end of the record where he's essentially rapping you know because mm-hmm. even like you you at one point you're singing um uh you say i play too rough mm-hmm. and then later on you switch it around and you go i say you play too rough mm-hmm. like you when you're performing this live you ever accidentally mix mess those up or is it important <laughs> to keep that that kind of <laughs> parallel dichotomy thing going uh, yes and yes from time to time yeah i do get them switched up uh in this song actually more than any other song off the record probably because it is so wordy well you know and and it's interesting because um you know i'm I'm always going on about titles right you know just because Mm -hmm. you know in the world every in this world every every song is a single yeah but um you know you have a skeleton key really only appears once in the song i think top of the Third, 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 verse. third verse, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't know what else you'd call it. Well, it's funny you mention that because <laughs> originally it was titled Invisible Q, yeah, which is not very good. Yeah. And my ex-girlfriend suggested 
calling it skeleton key. And it, it well, skeleton right. key's got a connotation. I'm not sure exactly what it. Well, it made sense because that is essentially what the song is uh, is about. It's about having a skeleton key. You know, to you know, when you're in a relationship and somebody mm. bears themselves to you, they bear all. They bear their soul. They're ve- they're very vulnerable. It's almost like you have a skeleton key to them. Mm. You know, you mm. can access all facets all sides of them and sometimes having that skeleton key people aren't prepared for the responsibility of being able to unlock every door and that's kind of what the song is getting at no it's um an interesting chorus although i don't know if it's chorus if it's maybe more of a bridge it's kind the of a straight part. into um to, to look straight up part mm-hmm. it's sort of a um, i call it a chorus it, it, it certainly yeah. plays out like a chorus it does yeah yeah I'd say it's, it's got the up. lift it's got the yeah, yeah big yeah. feeling to it mm-hmm. but the but the end line of the chorus is so interesting could you actually just play that for a sec? Sure. Because I just think it's so neat. Uh, Jesus Christ, what's the first line? <laughs> straight, straight <laughs> I don't usually start in the middle like this. Uh, straining, okay, yeah. cool. Straining to look straight up Maybe I care too much I'm waiting in line Just to waste my time for a glimpse Say I play too rough I know you're scared too But we're lying around Waiting for some invisible cue <laughs> Were you it's, talking it's, about the very end? Yeah, the very end okay, Because you, instead, of, instead of um, mirroring that The line th- that you would think you normal It actually goes into a different point Okay, yeah. You, know, you, 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 you mean melodically? You mean melodically? No, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that, like, that was that a bit of a twist. Instead of instead of going, instead oh, of going back down to the you one. Mean, you mean melodically? Yeah. Musically, yeah. it goes yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I needed a way to get back to the verse, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, to do it in the way that it happens in the middle of the chorus wouldn't have worked. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it, it it still sounds really natural. Like, it doesn't right. sound like a contrived change. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, it actually sounds a little bit less resolved at the end of that chorus. Mm-hmm. It, it, mm-hmm. It, 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 what, what it what it does really it keeps the song moving because it doesn't feel like it, exactly it doesn't feel like a finality at that point and then you move on to yeah. go back to the verse it's yeah. not like you know a cold cut yeah it's like a cold cut like it flows exactly. into the it's verse more flowing kind of which thing. I think is what you were going for right yeah, it, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah so when, no. when you say the song was designed what do you what do you mean by that what do you mean well actually I, I was the one that said your song sounded designed and you agreed you said yes it's very designed oh what, well, what, is, what does that mean to you I know what it means to me well but. I. Uh, <laughs> I just mean that there was a lot of thought put into the structure of it, uh, the phrasing. Mm-hmm. Every every line, there's nothing that I, I left to chance in this song, as well, far as the phrasing of the... So there's a the lot songs. of editing? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. It took me a little while to, to write the lyrics for this one. We got a tweet in from uh, Sharon. Um, an interesting idea that will occupy my brain for days. Mm. In this world, every song is a single. Thank you. <laughs> 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 but no, you, but I can I can tell, actually, because there is no sloppiness yeah. in the song like sometimes mm-hmm. you know we mm-hmm. write songs and you you have a line that you can't quite <laughs> figure out so yeah, you kind of yeah, stick yeah, something yeah, yeah. in there yeah. <laughs> yeah. placeholder lyrics yeah and it's kind of rushed and you go well yeah. go back there's none of that here right. yeah. you know yeah. and um, I like writing lyrics like this myself but it's really hard to do mm-hmm. when they're so rhythmic and I, my problem is I, the last thing I ever write and I actually like to find out from you um, where the lyrics sit in your process is it a first or a second with me it's the very last you know last thing there's really okay there's really no system for me it can work either way no it can go so many ways for me so what what happened with this song was the music first uh actually you know what they almost came together came together well the melody um i i i went to my um little rehearsal space in, in my apartment and i just wanted to write something that was uh sort of light uh rambling Something in a, a kind of a country vein, and I remember distinctly just sitting down and coming up with the chord progression first, and I, I just picked right. up the guitar and went. I had those three chords, mm-hmm. and I went down to the F and thought, how can I get back to the G? And then I thought, you know, t- take it to the five. And what I liked in that was that there's a chromatic build there from the F, yeah, I love those chromatic builds, yeah. man. Yeah. You know? I love those chromatic builds. I, I had the melody on top, but the actual words came later. Right. Yeah. And, there, and I'm assuming there's a lot more editing in the words than there was after you... Oh, yeah. That chord per, the, the chord progression was mm-hmm. done and that was that pretty much stayed. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the thing that I like about this, this tune is I, I like having a juxtaposition between something that's very um, thought out and very constructed against something 
that sort of left a chance and um, a bit messy. Mm -hmm. So I intentionally didn't give the band that much time to learn the songs. I sent them demos. And we went into the studio after a couple of rehearsals. And I wanted the song, the actual instrumentation of it, to retain somewhat of a loose vibe, mm -hmm. but have the phrasing and the lyrics be very put together on top of that. Right. You okay. Know? So. Well, that, that was one hmm. comment I had actually about, this is more of an arrangement thing. Like you went, you went verse, verse, chorus, instrumental break, and then back to the chorus, mm -hmm. which I think structurally is, is a little different, which is, which is kind of cool, but... I think because the melodies, the sung melodies were so fascinating and interesting, the instrumental part kind of let me down. I was like, I wanted, I wanted that fiddle or violin or whatever yeah. it was to really take off and do something really kind of kind of crazy or interesting so or something. Yeah. Well, after we recorded the song, I had the same thought. I thought, ah, oh, you know, I, I was a bit underwhelmed. But yeah, but I don't know if they. I don't actually know if a solo instrument could really. But I think it would do up, what the vocal melody does. No, it wouldn't have to do the same thing, but it would have to carry the same spirit, I think. Yeah. But the thing is, the subtlety of it grew on me. And I, I, I okay. realized that it was the yeah. right call later on down the line. Yeah. When I need first to hear listened, it a few more times then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when I listened to Tommy for the first time by The Who, I was, I was quite underwhelmed by the production of it. I thought it sounded very thin, and uh, it just didn't, it, it had no, like, it, it wasn't uplifting the way that Quadrophenia was, which is the, the album that I. I got onto before. It just mm. didn't have the big kind of chunkiness. But then I realized way down the line that that was the right call. It, it, it needed that, um, that delicacy. Oh, I see, yeah. Hmm. So I think um, it speaks to the vulnerability of the lyrics to have somewhat of a vulnerable bridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like well, a, that, that does, it, it, it is what, what that affords you as well. It gives you a little bit of time to process the lyrics. That's exactly and, and to take it, a break from... Space. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. otherwise it would be intense the exactly. entire way through. That's, right? You just articulated or crystallized the thought that I had. Mm -hmm. It kind of gives you a breathing space as opposed to having some big ripping solo yeah. during it, you know? Yeah, yeah. and because there's a, there a lot of words here, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're great words, but there's, it's, there's a lot, um, which, which is so impressive. And I like the fact that it sounds like a country song, but it's actually not simple. You know, yeah. it's like this really. It's not like a Hank Williams. You know, song. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, just, it's and everything you, yeah, time you think yeah. it's you, you know what it's going to do, it's you don't know what it's going to do. You know, all right, right on, yeah. Mr. Okay. Dave Miner, would you like to tell our listeners what the heck we're doing in their ears? Sure. Uh, for those just joining us, you're listening to Song Talk Radio with Bruce Neal and Phil on CJRU 1280 AM and streamed on songtalk.ca slash livestream. Tonight, our guest is Marlon Chaplin. Don't forget, we love to hear from you, so tweet in your thoughts to us at Song Talk Radio or via email at feedback at songtalk.ca. We'll share your thoughts in real time. And you can find links to all the products, books, and web services we mention on Song Talk Radio on our resources page at songtalk.ca slash resources. Uh, coming up on Song Talk Radio in the coming weeks, we have on August 23rd, all about the pre-chorus, August 30th, Jewels, and on September 6th, Jacob Moon. And if you're in the Toronto area, please join us at our next Songwriters Roundtable Meetup on Thursday, August 25th, from 7 to 10 p.m. at the Transac Club. It's free to join on Meetup and free to attend the roundtable. Stop by songtalk.ca slash meetup for all the details. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And of course, Dave's wearing a, a, a shirt that apparently says Rev Star. It says in, Rev Star. In China. Is it yeah. Japanese? It's, yeah, this is, a, uh, uh, we've, this is our, our new series of electric guitars, and oh. the, uh, uh, the logo has been modeled uh, after um, a, uh, a Hanko stamp. I'm probably mangling the pronunciation of that, but it is uh, how uh, um, one might notarize an official document in Japan, and we wanted to emphasize oh, cool. that tradition because oh, it's part of our, cool. it's the 50th anniversary of Yamaha guitars this year, and uh, we wanted to come up with some some cool Japanese stuff. Oh, cool. You know, I think yeah. we should actually do um, a show actually on careers in music that don't involve actually, like, writing music. Yeah. Because you can actually have a really good career in music, but, you know, working for Yamaha or mm -hmm. HHP or some of these other, you know, um, and I think a lot of people who get involved in music, you can still be involved in music, but you can, you know, have the joy of working around the music industry oh, without yeah. having to... You know, yeah. think, of, oh, I've got to be a performer, which very few people can actually wind up doing. Well, I, I look at a, a at a lot of spreadsheets all day, which is not necessarily what I dreamed of when I started playing guitar. But I'm, I'm constantly, <laughs> really, may, well, a little bit, about half and half. Um, but uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good way to stay in in contact with people who are making music all the time. It's very easy to find you know people to jam with, and it's it's a nice mm. um, sort of common language that I don't know if you have in in a lot of other other industries where I can be anywhere on the world talking. to to 
someone related to my business and we can quickly start talking favorite bands favorite songs favorite guitars favorite pedals yeah you know mm-hmm. and it's a it's a, a really uh, it's a cool industry to be a part of yeah it's like a nice little hub for like-minded people for sure yeah you know and it's you know if you if you have to stare at spreadsheets i mean it's probably better than staring at a spreadsheet for you know Keaton Taxes, coils or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've heard those Keaton coils guys. Are, it's just a wild party a wild over there. Party, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't call them heating coils for nothing. Oh, how about yourself, Marlon? What what um, what role do you you fulfill? Are you strictly a performer, recording guy? Um, I would what say else do you do? Performing is my number one thing, but I produce yeah. as well. You're a producer as yeah. well, right? Yeah. Now, what's your um, what's your writing process? I mean, do you like block off time every day to write or? No, it's not like that. I actually go through waves where I won't write for months. And I'll write about four or five songs in maybe a week. Really? Okay. Which just happened recently. I just, I now, are like you, six, so are you collecting ideas um, before this, or are you just... No, it's really a... Kind of a simmering? It's a, exactly. It's a simmering sort of thing. So you're not, you're not writing anything down? There's no sort of structure? You just Well, actually, uh, I'll record into my phone. I'll record little ideas that I have into my phone. Okay, yeah, so you don't, because four or five months down the road, you might be like, I had this emotional thought yeah. three months ago, when yeah. I, and I can't remember. And it'll, it allows you a certain objective perspective, too, because yes. you might not even remember recording it, so it's almost yeah. like it's not you. You have to learn how to second. play it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to learn how to play it, and on. you know immediately if it's good or not. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're not emotionally invested in it. Yeah, 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 very true to that. Which yeah. is great. Yeah. I do that with mixes as well. I won't mm-hmm. listen to a mix for a couple weeks. And then yeah. come back to it with re- with fresh ears, and I think there's uh, some wisdom in that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. for sure, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, well, you need to get away from your art once in a while to, yeah, you know, just get out of your head in general. I think. Yeah, well, because I know, um, I mean, some people are very, um, uh, very disciplined. I know Scott B. always, you know, he had a he had a, a rehearsal room booked, you know, every Saturday, and he'd go there from. I think like from twelve to six, mm-hmm. and he would just sit there and write all day, and that's what he would do. Yeah, just yeah. you know, almost like a brill building. Kind yeah. Of thing. yeah, like mm-hmm. that was his job, and that's, that's like, what he did. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and um, I have massive respect for people that that, that do it that way. Yeah, and then there, there are those guys or gals that uh, decide to write a song a day yeah. for like a year. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've yeah. heard Paul McCartney to say that uh, he, he he's done the same kind of thing. He goes, you know, get up in the morning, have my breakfast, write a song. Go out, walk the dog. It's like, and he knew he was going to do it that morning. Mm-hmm. I, have yeah. tri- I have tried that. Sounds before. like a song right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woke up. Uh, <laughs> Get out of bed. <laughs> Wait a minute. He wrote that already. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I, I just okay. heard an interview, I think it was with Neil Young, and he says he starts off um, every day uh, by, he picks up a guitar and comes up with, the, with a chord progression, and he's going to write a song to that progression. Doesn't matter necessarily if it, if it inspires him. He's going to see the exercise through to the right. end. Oh, and yeah. it's, mm. you know, it's, it's working at the muscle. So yeah. I yeah, think yeah, the, the, greatest, the, the easiest way to write one great song is to write a thousand okay songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true for yeah. that. Well, it's just like anything, the more you do it, the better. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's a great thing about being in a band, because if you can be in a band that say, okay, we rehearse every Wednesday, you know, or Wednesday and Thursday, or whatever it is, you're doing that on a regular basis, so you're getting used to doing that. Absolutely. Whereas I think when you don't have that structure, because you're you know you got a normal job or and family and responsibilities, it can be hard to actually impose that kind of structure on yourself to to keep on writing. Because mm-hmm. once you get out of it, it's it's hard to get back into it. Yeah. Well, I I yeah. wonder if if um that if for a lot of people there's there's an er, uh, an element of intimidation so you uh you the blank don't canvas kind of thing not even so much the blank canvas although that's definitely part of it but the idea that um oh i'm not going i don't want to write a song until i until i know i've got a great song oh okay. yeah. and people yeah, stop yeah. because and without realizing that that they don't just fall out i mean you've no. clearly been working on your songwriting craft for for years and years and years and and, and that that and that's shows just the wrong so. attitude yeah, 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 but yeah. but I like I I fall into that trap my myself, right, so right. I I can relate to why you people just have get to give yourself the, the the excuse to give yourself a, a bad draft. Yeah, of a song. yeah, and, and just and just think that if you wrote a bad song, it's just a draft of well, a song. Well, the, the 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 weird thing is that the world needs more bad songs because that's how we will get the process <laughs> to get us through. <laughs> Ultimately, <laughs> that's, that's, that's my takeaway. <laughs> more bad songs. <laughs> I've heard it called the "What will they think" syndrome. And yeah, if you get too caught up in that, yeah, it's, yeah, it can yeah. you can't even yeah. even 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 if you're a developed songwriter, you can't be thinking. No, that. you can't. You can't. <laughs> okay, shall we well, hear another song? Yes. All right, this okay. one's called "Danger," and then this is a demo. Um, it's, this is a demo stage right now. So, are you still in the process of writing this, or is it no? This written? is completely finished. Okay. Um, I just haven't had a chance to. Uh, is is this a first? Has it not been posted on the internet anywhere or anything like that? Like, it's been av- made available for a limited amount of time just okay. to stream on SoundCloud. Oh, I see. And uh, but that's not going to last too much longer. Ooh. 
New E string. <laughs> You drifted half mast when you float in the past. Don't oh, fear will hold you down, make you sink until you drown. Let opportunity pass, question your task, or is that just escape? Dodge your own chosen fate Danger, danger, danger It seeps in Love you try to keep it But it just slips away And everything you told me you once held dear In one fell swoop You cut the rope And let it disappear Blow away Ooh. I've learned not to hate Not to escape What you don't have to hide It's getting harder all the time I think that I'm right That my personal plight Is unique unto myself God knows I still need help well, Danger, danger, danger It seeps in Love you, try to keep it But the harder you try The more it slips away Everything you told me that you once held dear In one fell swoop you cut the rope and you let it disappear Float away Ooh. So keep your mouth shut Your lines might get cut Well, who's writing anyway? Who edits what you say? Who oh, all that you've lost? What little you've got, or oh, you couldn't keep it anyway? What more is there to say? Danger, 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 it seems thin Can I expect to love if love to me means something more than giving in? You know the road is two lanes wide and it goes in two directions Connection, something you can make without having to collide Run and hide Beautiful.
Fantastic. It was Danger, Danger on uh, CJRU 1280 AM, the scope at Ryerson. And uh, that was uh, Danger, Danger um, by Marlon Chaplin. Beautiful, beautiful song. Brilliant, yeah. I've, I've, I've always been told, or I've always learned, if you've got a melody... And the melody on that, on the guitar at that opening, absolutely gorgeous, right? I just loved it. It really reminded me of the Decembers, who I absolutely okay. love, right? Because they often do that kind of, you know, melodic acoustic guitar thing. Yeah. Um, and um, but I've always been told don't don't have your vocal melody follow that <laughs> thing. But somehow you made it work, and I'm trying to figure out why it worked when you did it. But if I ever try that, it never works. I've had the same thought before. Yeah, I've had the same thought. It just uh, you know I didn't overthink it. It mm. just felt right. It just felt right. Yeah, did I didn't, it. I didn't uh, go beyond that. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on why that worked? Well, w- before we get into that, we just got an email from Heather. Love the symmetry of the guitar and the vocal line. It's delicate and, and really highlights the lyrics. Thank you, Heather. Cheers, Heather. Thank there you, you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what what I what I really liked about it, I mean, from a from a technical guitar standpoint was how it it's kind of shifting constantly between like a, a, a rhythmic chordal part and then doubling the melody right. and it moves back and forth between that and I thought it was it was really interesting. Oh cool. Yeah. Well I think opening up in the chorus and just doing the big strums. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's Absolutely. kind of like a uh, cathartic moment. Well the, yeah, I mean yeah. the, the dynamics in the chorus are, are there's there's a lot that I really like about this song and uh, I'm not just saying this to be nice. Phil and I mostly talk about songs I hate, but <laughs> this is, this is I should let Phil get a word in edgewise most, but I just I got a lot to say. Um but uh, uh yeah that that build is uh uh, those, those dynamics, I think they they really they hit hard, and there's there's good lyrics backing them up. It's a good a good melody. It's a really really engaging and interesting song. You're killing me with kindness. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love. That. Thank you. Uh, the last uh, your last line of the chorus. Um, In one fell swoop. Well, the one is like where you let it disappear and then blow away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, those that is just such a fantastic, fantastic line. Um, <clears throat> And the way, you know, then you repeat. And I love the fact that, you know, you changed that, you know, blow away to float away yeah. on the second um, on the second chorus, which is, I love little sort of details like that, you know. It, and yeah. again, it shows the attention to, to a detail. And sometimes I know, um, when, <clears throat> especially people when they've just started songwriting, they get very protective of their songs. And sometimes I think you need to be able to look at your stuff and, and, and look for those little points of craft. Mm-hmm. in those lines about like okay just changing those two words and it's not much but it really shows i think kind mm-hmm. of like you know it's the difference between someone who's who's like futzes around in his basement and puts together that something that looks like a guitar and right. it's kind of fun and that's right. good and a luther someone yeah. who who's like a real luthier who mm-hmm. makes, you know yeah, who, yeah. who will basically spend 15 hours on an inlay because that's part of the craft and that's the difference i think you know when you get to a certain point in your songwriting you, you need to get to that point where you can look at each line and go and i think patrick talked about this last week mm-hmm. about looking at the line and saying okay is that line good enough mm-hmm. and if it's it not be. then you yeah. just keep on bashing yeah. away well yeah. and and i wonder if if just that circles back a little bit to the conversation about you know the the intimidation in songwriting where mm-hmm. where where a, a newer songwriter might be worried like it's got to come out perfect and and may not necessarily appreciate like yes. there's so much there's so much craft to it and here right. again it looks like these edits the, or these these lyrics are the result of a lot of careful thought yeah, which isn't which isn't at all to say they sound contrived. Like they sound very natural, but they're yeah, yeah. But, some, but they're they're clearly great. designed and they're clearly yeah. correct. They're yeah. clearly, clearly crafted. Mm-hmm. I, I do love that last line. In one fell swoop, you cut the rope and let it disappear. It's yeah. so. It's 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 got that imagery in it, and it's got that I don't know it's something something about that line just kind of gets me. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it's funny that I I didn't even think of this, but it's funny that we listened to Skeleton Key before because there's that line about um, the shears. Kind of, mm-hmm. Oh right! I'm falling away. Well, but both so of these songs. A theme, both both <laughs> yeah, of these songs. Everything okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> cool, but, but, but both of these songs, you seem to have this. Uh, you're playing with these dualities about you know in in skeleton key about about being the dependent or the dependee, and then this one seems mm-hmm. to be about uh, taking risks or playing it safe. Or yep. but yep. but you seem to you seem to strike a really nice balance on, in both songs between the two sides right. of the art. Like you're not really. You're, you're, you're done, it's not exactly fence sitting, but you're actually really invested in both sides. It seems. Yeah, I mean, I don't, th- I, I don't look at a lot of things as black and white. Yeah, yeah, and, and that comes through. I loved uh, you. You um, in the opening riff, uh, you had a break. 
Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, which 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 is great because it was sort of unexpected. Right. But it really does set the. It, it not that it sounds unnatural, and I think people that's it's a hard balance to do unexpected and still make it sound natural. Mm-hmm. Because I think it's, especially when you're starting off, you're trying to do something weird and different. Very often it just sounds kind of clumsy. Right. But this stuff actually sounds like, it sounded like a, a, it was unexpected, but it sounded natural again, you know? Yeah. Um, And I love the last two, uh, the last two chords of the, um, of your chorus, which is, I think, was it a 5-7? Did you go to it? Uh, What would that be? Let me, let me work that out quickly. Um... Oh, that there? Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, suspended seven yeah. to a uh, flat seven. Oh, nice. That is so tasty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, you know, and it's, it's, it's not that it's old fashioned, but I mean, it's, again, it's, um, it's not some weird jazz chord, but it's no, just a no, very, very delicate, just, yeah. you know. It's just breaking out of the, you know, the one, six, four, five thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a brilliant. Uh, well, as a teenager, my, my 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 guy was Pete Townsend. I was obsessed. Oh yeah, with yeah. Him. yeah. He's all about the suspended chords. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so that whole suspended thing must have, you know, yeah, so, yeah. it's been it's been ingrained. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good. That, well, that's a good guy to actually be obsessed with. I think. Oh yeah, know? he's a genius. It's, I went through a phase where I was listening really into Al Di Miola back then, when everyone thought playing a million miles an hour was really really good. <laughs> I think we've grown out of that, but uh, yeah, we thought that was really cool. So was was this song the, the same thing? And the guitar part came first, and then the lyrics, and then it you bashed actually, away the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was similar. I was. I got to give credit where credits due. I had never seen this done before. I, I have um, my capo on the first five strings of the guitar, leaving the low E open. Oh, right. And uh, when you're in capo two for all the other strings. Yeah, I'm on uh, okay. fret two. Yeah, so yeah, and cable Jerry Legere, who's a great singer songwriter, who I'm uh, I'm friends with. I saw him do it, and uh. he, he does that a few times. And I thought, oh, I never thought of doing. Yeah, that. I've never seen that before either. Yeah. It's like you're synthesizing a, a drop E tuning, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he uh, he has a song called Early Riser that that utilizes that, and I just loved the freedom that that allowed you. Yeah, having yeah, that yeah. low E, that drone. Yeah, it's almost like drop D, but but not. Well, yeah, and and that's really what gives that. I mean, I, I want to ask you about that opening guitar riff and mm-hmm. how you actually develop that because, like, when like I'm I'm a piano player primarily, okay. right? And I know how to play about two and a half chords on the guitar really badly, <laughs> so, but I can like play piano decently, right? But if I want to just hammer out some chords, I can hammer out some chords, but I pay attention to what the top note is, okay. and I'll invert the chords so that it, it the top note then develops a bit of a melody, right? Which it sounded yeah. like that's kind of what you were doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and having that drone note allows you yeah. to, uh, more freedom to explore melodies as well. Right. If, if, it's, if it's just your guitar, if, mm-hmm. if there's no bass player or mm-hmm. a second guitar player to like, keep the chord going. So. But so that, that intro that you did, it there there is a way just to play that just the chords, right? Without without the melody. Without the melody. Yeah, I mean, I think you're talking about um, like I could just do that. That's what it would sound like without yeah. me doing the melody. Yeah. Because I, I, I could have gone... When you drifted half mast. But something about the... When you drifted half mast. No, yeah, that's... A, there's not a right. defined rhythm, because if I did that, then the chorus wouldn't have as big of an effect, because the chorus does start to just... Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's so it's like, you got to save it. Yeah. Well, and I think it's... you got to change it. And you yeah. need to be like conscious about saying, okay, this is the chorus, and it needs to sound like like it needs to be its own thing. Yeah, you know, sometimes yeah, chorus got to be different. It yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, strong. Yeah. But as uh, about the uh, capo, uh, we have um, uh, one of our guests is Gary Woods. Okay. Yeah, he's an amazing finger style guitarist, and we'll put up a link to the um, to his sh- uh, shows. Sure. But he has just like he's, hundreds of capos. He's got, like, and, he's got like two of them going at once and, 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 like, and it's, you, half, you have to watch when you shot them on stuff. video as well. And they're, they're like they're half stuff. capos or there's yeah. capos that just do like the middle two strings. Yeah. Right. Um, he just has right. tons of I these different capos. I have seen that done, yeah. yeah right. so and and cool. granted, Gary Woods, that, that's what he does. His, his songs are instrumental. Yeah. Okay. Like he doesn't okay. sing, he doesn't, there's no, the, the melody is the guitar. Does he, he do like the whole acoustic slapping thing in the He does the slapping and the whole bit. He's pretty astounding. He's incredible actually. We've got to get him back on the show sometime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, so is, 
Uh, sorry, is, is this song uh, on the new EP? No. Okay. Is, no. This, uh, is this kind of a, a new unrecorded piece? Yeah, this is very new. Because I'm mm. I'm really curious. Given that you're you're also a producer, mm-hmm. I think that this song, for for a lot of the reasons we've just been talking about, works really beautifully as a solo acoustic piece. Yes. And so I'm wondering, like, fr- from the producer part of your brain, is that something you imagine fleshing out with a full band, or would this be a sim- single? No, you, you solo guitar piece. I don't think it needs anything else. No, I, I no. totally agree with mm. you. Uh, the only yeah. thing that if you listen to the demo, cowbell. Cow- <laughs> well, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> cowbell. <laughs> yeah. The only thing on the demo that there is, is um, which I do want to use actually, in the chorus when I go up to that. Yeah, there's like a double with a slide or something. Mm. I yeah. did put a slide guitar down. Yeah, on yeah. yeah. Mm. Not for the end, but um. Yeah, there will be another guitar just coming in for that line. Yeah, that's what I loved about the chorus, though, because you actually, even though you're doing the the straightforward strumming thing, you actually added a little sort of melodic um, uh, lead. You know, like right. a sort yeah, of yeah, counter yeah. melody. Yeah, it's and I think most people place. wouldn't think about doing that when they're just playing a single guitar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they'll just say, "Oh, I'll just do the." Again, it goes chorus. back to that drone note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It allows and, a lot and, of freedom. Yeah, yeah it does. and you actually and you ended it. Uh, you ended the song on the on the drone section on the A section. Yes, yes. Well, and actually, right, right at the end of the song, after you went through the last, the last chorus and then went back to the A section, I mm-hmm. thought to myself, it would be nice if you did the melody as do-do-do's, and then you started doing, I think you did la 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he read closer. my mind. <laughs> well, I'm a big uh, advocate, I'm a big sucker, rather, for the major one to the minor five, which Ooh. is what this song uses. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, it goes back to Ringo Starr. With uh, "Don't Come Easy," which mm. is so beautiful, the mm. just that. And I, I wanted to end the song on the minor five because it's kind of uh, it's melancholic, you know. And I like the unresolved as well. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. beautiful, yeah. actually. Yeah, and it doesn't even it sounds unresolved, but like. Cleanly, the nicely light, unresolved. Light <laughs> yeah. Unresolved. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a difference between being unresolved and just stopping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> true, yeah. true. This, this, was, this yeah. was like unresolved, unwell. This yeah. is really getting profound. <laughs> it is. It's, it's like walking into a room and asking a question. Yeah. And then <laughs> but um, so if somebody wanted to get more of your music, where would they go? Uh, you can go to my website, which is simply marlinchaplin.com. All right. Uh, Wonder well, it's trade. marlinchaplin.com, not simply Marlin Chaplin. Okay. <laughs> be kind right. of, I, I'm going to park that domain Marlin tonight, Chaplin. actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but more directly, you can go on iTunes mm-hmm. and get Wanderer by Trade. You can also get that EP on CD Baby. Ooh, CD Baby, right. And the Google Play. <laughs> the Google Play. <laughs> or you can just come out to one of my shows and talk to me and get, get a CD right You've got an upcoming show? The horse's can... mouth. Um, yes, uh, September 16th. I'm going to be with the full band at the Cameron House. Oh, oh nice. Front, Front or back? Room? Back. Back, nice. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's, that's great. How have you found CD Baby? Have you been pretty happy with it? Or? Yeah. I mean, uh, listen, the thing is, with uh, downloading music, the whole music industry has been flipped upside down, right? So mm-hmm. you're constantly navigating the waters of what works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. How you can get the best, um, how you can make money. Off, yeah. off, off of your music but CD Baby seems to treat you well they, they don't take a huge cut because hmm. I know there's lots of services that you know will get your stuff on Spotify and I'm on Spotify it's on Spotify too, music actually, distribution services yeah yeah. yeah. I, I don't care how people access my music I mean I, I'm a vinyl advocate I like vinyl mm. yeah. that's Just how like I Dave. buy music still <laughs> did, you, did you press your own album on vinyl? no well, you can do that too. I want to. Actually, it's a little. Uh, <laughs> that's a, exactly. It's a script. <laughs> Dave's a big vinyl guy too. Yeah, I love vinyl because of how good I've been told it sounds. Uh, ah. <laughs> it does sound better, man. It does sound better. <laughs> Wait, how could you? How good, depending on your uh, hi fi system. I've, I've got a, I've, <laughs> I do okay, man. We've got. We've got, <laughs> yeah, got my apartment sounds all right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good. Cool. I know some people. <laughs> all right. Unfortunately, we could talk forever, but yes, uh, this so. is about all the time we have tonight. Well, thank you guys for talking around. This is really interesting. I want to say this right now. Um, it's refreshing to be on a show like this. Cool. Um, because, you know, it's not every day that you get people that really care this deeply about the, the craft and they want to explore it. So I appreciate it. Cool. No, great. thanks, man. It's great having you on, right? I hope. Will you come on again? Of course. Woo! Cool. Yeah, great. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. 
Okay, so um, please, uh, out there, send us your impressions via Twitter at Song Talk Radio, via email at feedback at songtalk.ca, Facebook and YouTube, Song Talk Radio, stop by the website, songtalk.ca. Also, subscribe to the Song Talk Radio podcast on iTunes at songtalk.ca slash iTunes, and don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter at songtalk.ca. Uh, you'll find all the links to all the products, books, and web services we mention on the show on our resources page. That's songtalk.ca slash resources. And if you're in the Toronto area, please join us at the next Songwriters Roundtable Meetup. That's on Thursday, August the 25th from 7 to 10 p.m. at the Transact Club. It's free to join on Meetup. It's free to attend the roundtable. And uh, that's basically like we do here, a um, bunch of songwriters in a room talking about songwriting. Yeah, it's but a there's great beer. Yeah, there's, there's a little more beer, beer than there is yeah. here. <laughs> cool. uh, stop by songtalk.ca slash meetup for all the details. RSVP, yes, to let us know you're coming. Uh, we'd like to thank CJRU 1280 AM for putting thank up you. with us. Uh, we'd like to thank Nicole DiDonato for thank you, Nicole. managing our social media channels. More else. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and most of all, uh, thanks to you, our beloved home listeners. And uh, if you're on Twitter, you can follow Phil. At the Phil Emery, but we'd also like to thank Dave Miner for sitting in for Bruce today. Yes, absolutely. I, I haven't been invited back. <laughs> <laughs> to that. That. You'll be back soon. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, David, for stepping in for Bruce. And uh, you're on Twitter, David? Yeah, I'm at Dave O'Fonic. Dave O'Fonic. Dave O'Fonic, yes. yes. Cool. Get that hi fi going. <laughs> and I I'll believe... come over to your place. I'll okay, all right, set it up. <laughs> and Marlon, I believe you're on uh, Twitter too. On Twitter? I am, yeah. It's just uh, at Marlon Chaplin. At Marlon Chaplin? Simply. Marlon Chaplin. And Not can, simply, sorry. And oh. you can follow Nicole. Nicole K. D. Donato. Nicole K. D. Donato. Nicole D. Donato. And uh, please stop by the website at uh, songtalk.ca.